Good morning. What's going on? It's Kyle Henderson of BamaInsider.com coming to you on Thursday, January 21st, coming to you from beautiful Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Thank you for joining me this morning on the Bama Factor Daily. You can download this on podcast, Apple, Spotify, wherever you get your podcasts. But thank you for listening, watching right here on YouTube. Definitely hit the thumbs up, like, and subscribe. We appreciate you more than you know. Today on the show, I'm breaking this segment up twice. I'm going to open talking about the Alabama basketball team. Time to give Nate Oates and the Crimson Tide basketball team some love as this team is straight rolling in the second half of this video. I'm going to talk about the Alabama defense and the components that return going into 2021. There's tons of news to continue to follow. Just posted a video yesterday story talking about Bill O'Brien and Doug Marone coming to Alabama slam dunk hires for Nick Saban's coaching staff. It's incredible that he goes to the NFL to bring in former head coaches. Why Alabama? That's why. The Alabama basketball team, 12 and three overall seven and zero in conference play. They won eight games in a row, six and one at home, four and zero, away and two and two in neutral play you look at the transformation of this team from the beginning of the season to where they're at now i mean this team has clearly found their stride playing at an incredible level what they did against lsu was pretty ridiculous to be honest i mean I was watching that game on espn they defeat lsu 105 75 a lot of hype going to that game and alabama basketball has really been a buzzsaw right i mean you Look at everything that these guys did against LSU from a shooting standpoint. I mean, I haven't seen too many games like this, to be honest. I mean, John Petty, 8 of 10 from three-point land. 8 of 11 on the night, finished with 24 points, all from beyond the arc, right? Joshua Primo comes through, 22 points. Javon Quinterly, 22 points. What I like about this team is the overall depth that they have. Great rotation. Nate Oates uh, has talked about that depth that they have. I mean, it's been uh, quite, quite the performance by this team. And actually, I'm going to kind of run through a couple stats real quick and then kind of talk about where this team sits nationally uh, going into the later part of January. I think a a great place is just to start out with this team and, you know, the, the, the production that they put on the offensive side, right? I mean, there's so many points that are put on the board by this team. And you look at kind of the statistical outlook for this team right now and points per game. We're going to start with the average, which is they're scoring 81.8 points per game. And they're winning by a margin of 11.3 per game. They're shooting great. I mean, over uh, 43%. And then from beyond the arc, they're shooting uh, 35, almost, almost 36%. I mean, it's, uh, it's really amazing to kind of just step back and really appreciate what this team is doing overall. I mean, tons of minutes by a lot of guys, a lot of rotation. And when this team is shooting the ball, I mean, it's, I think it's going to be tough for anybody in the country to, to stop these guys. Right. I mean, what they did against LSU, look, I I don't know if that's going to happen again. I don't know if they're going to shoot like they did against LSU, they're probably going to have a game where it's reversed, right? I mean, some of these teams that live beyond the arc, I mean, that's just what happens. But, I mean, more times than not, this team has continued to show throughout this first half of the season that they can shoot the lights out of the ball. And um, I I know it's kind of a a new age basketball world. We don't really have a a big man down low getting buckets, but the team still does well um, hitting the glass. And I love the kickouts. I love the rotation. I love the ball movement. And Alabama right now sitting very pretty going into a later month. In fact, um, there's some national riders that have Alabama as a number two seed. Joe Lunardi just tweeted out, and this was on Wednesday, that he has Alabama as a number two seed. And his next projected rankings will be released on Friday. Alabama is number 10 in the Ken Pomery rankings. I mean, that's, I mean, that's pretty incredible. Number eight in Andy Katz rankings. So when you kind of look overall at Alabama basketball and what they've done, 
spectacular early season performance, I guess through the midway point, right? Um, and, I mean, I, I can't even imagine if this team really makes a run at the SEC title. And they, they certainly have to be the favorite down the stretch, right? I mean, look, they, they took it to Tennessee, 71-63. to 63, Took it to Florida, 86-71. to 71, Beat Auburn, 94-90. to 90, Very entertaining game. Beat Kentucky in Kentucky. I know Kentucky is not the Kentucky team of the past, but we can't, you know, let that affect what or how this team is playing up to this point. I mean, they're they're scoring a ton of points. I love the rotation overall. So, uh, kind of the 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 back end of this schedule. They got Mississippi State. And it's coming up on Saturday, and then they got Kentucky. That both of those games will be in Tuscaloosa. Alabama will be participating in the Big Twelve Challenge, in this will be in Norman, Oklahoma on January 30th. And that'll kind of close out the month of January. So Alabama has a ton of momentum. I kind of like scrolling through the rest of their schedule. I mean, these guys are going to be the favorite in every single game that they play throughout. A lot, a lot of momentum for these guys. Really like to see what's going on in Tuscaloosa inside Coleman Coliseum. So credit to Nate Oates and definitely give your support to the Alabama basketball team but it, because it has been a pleasure to watch this season. And uh, before we move to our next segment, talking about the defense, the Alabama football defense, there's only been one team that's been able to win the national championship in both football and in basketball. Florida did that back in 2007. Ironically, it was against Ohio State in both of those matchups. I want to highlight the Alabama defense because I think as we continue to talk about the team going into 2021, we're always talking about you know, the the losses on the defensive side, on the offensive side of the football. And with Alabama, rightfully so. I mean, you're losing Mac Jones. You're losing Heisman Trophy winner Devontae Smith. You're losing Najee Harris. Uh, you're losing Landon Dickerson. You're losing Alex Leatherwood. Uh, you're losing Deontay Brown. You're losing Jalen Waddle. That's a lot of pieces that are moving, right? So people are like, who's going to replace the offense? And it, you have a right to be concerned. We're going to dive into that. We've posted some videos already talking about guys who we feel should step up. There's plenty of guys that we feel are going to rise to the occasion. It's Alabama. They don't rebuild, they reload. However, on the defensive side, Alabama, that's going to be their strength, at least from an experience standpoint, going into the season. Now, we talked about this yesterday when we talked about Doug Marone and Bill O'Brien coming on board to Alabama. The defensive coaching staff, all those guys remain. Pete Golding, defensive coordinator, Charles Kelly with the safeties, Carl Scott, corners, Freddie Roach, defensive line, South Sincere, outside linebackers. That's great in terms of the defensive continuity, the defensive identity. So don't overlook that as we turn the page to 2021. Let's talk about some returning starters, guys who played a significant time for the Alabama defense during this past 2020 perfect season. And we'll start with the defensive line, Work our way back to the safeties. Justin Abogue played in 44 snaps this season. 440, I'm sorry. 440 snaps this season. And I think he's very underrated. I think a lot of the times when we talk about, you know, guys of the defense that that did great this year, um, of course, we're going to highlight Christian Barmore, who's headed to the NFL. We're going to talk about Tim Smith. But don't overlook Justin Abogue. I think he's a guy who contributed at a high level the entire season, played in um, a, a ton of games. He played in all 13 games. He had 19 tackles. Didn't get a lot of heat on the quarterback, but don't overlook Justin Abogba. I think he's an all-purpose defensive lineman that uh, coming back, sh- you should be very excited about. DJ Dell comes back. A lot of experience coming into his junior year. This guy played a significant role when he first arrived in Tuscaloosa. And then this year as well, he's a run stuffer. 383 snaps. A guy that, um, you know, doesn't get a a ton of publicity. The big guys usually don't that are interior defensive tackles. But DJ Dell is a key component in terms of that run defense. You also got Phil Mathis coming back. He announced that he's coming back for his, uh, it'll be his junior year. This is a weird world because he's already a junior, but because of the NCAA blanket waiver rule, he's returning. And it's not unexpected. Played in 13 games, had 31 tackles. He's very productive as well. I mean, him and Justin Abogbe, uh, those are two very experienced defensive linemen, along with DJ Dell. So as you can see, just just talking about the defensive line, this is quality depth. 
that will provide some great rotation. LeBron Ray should be coming back. We haven't heard an official announcement, but you got to think that he's coming back to create more value for himself. LeBron Ray missed 2019 with the injury, then was dealt with another injury in 2020. So, you know, that happens. Sometimes it's just you get these nagging injuries that keep you from participating at a very high level. If he comes back, I mean, think about the guys we're already talking about. Justin Bogbe, DJ Dell, Phil Mathis, LeBron Ray. I mean, all those guys have experience. And if LeBron Ray can ever get to that point where we think he can get to, and you're looking at a fantastic defensive front. We're not worried. We're, we're still, we still have guys to talk about. Tim Smith, great addition uh, to the team last year. Played lights out as a freshman in the opportunities that he had. He didn't get a lot of opportunities, but you saw him really come along, right? 183, um, 183 snaps last season, which is big time, right? So, um, I mean, when you look to rising, it's crazy again. He's only going to be a freshman this year, replaying his freshman year. And he contributed a ton. Jamil Burroughs, another guy who's going to be a you know, defensive uh, run stuffer, 65 snaps. He returns. And then Stefan Wynn, who played 18 snaps for Alabama in 2020. So uh, a lot of mixing and matching. And then, of course, you got uh, the younger guys coming in. Moncal Good Goodwin will be an early enrollee for this defensive line unit. Let's also look at the inside linebackers. I won't talk too much, too much about kind of the guys that are uh, incoming, the early enrollees or um, guys that are arriving in the summertime. I just want to talk about returning players who played um, a good amount of snaps during 2020. So if I'm, if I'm not mentioning some of these freshmen that are coming in from 2021, and there's some vi- very dynamic players, I- I'm just talking about guys who are returning with, the, with actual experience from last year. So just want to point that out. Christian Harris comes back. For his third season at Alabama, 786 snaps during 2020. He has a tremendous amount of experience. Remember, he started every single game, um, almost every single game as a freshman in 2019 and then returns and has a great season for Alabama in 2020. Him and Dylan Moses, I mean, I know Dylan Moses didn't play at his highest level because of his, his knee injury. But look, that that was a great interior linebacker unit maybe not great but at least it, it was a lot better than the year before when it was just christian harris and shane lee as freshmen christian harris is a guy who has a lot of athleticism guy played corner at the high school level so you see i, I think he had a interception late in the season right you see and i think that was his first career interception i, I like his overall athleticism i think he's only going to get better he's got a very high intellect he reminds me of dylan moses in that intellect comparison because he's a guy very high iq and he can be that leader. He can be that alpha male going into 2021 because he has now, you know, two years of experience, a lot of playing time. Almost like, what is it, almost like 1,500 snaps or something like that? Um, really incredible to see uh, Christian Harrison and kind of the transformation that he continues to make uh, at Alabama. All right, let's uh, talk about, you know, maybe another guy who could step up for that inside linebacker position because Alabama is losing Dylan Moses, as you know. And who is that going to be? Is it going to be Jalen Moody? He was the next inside linebacker to come off the bench for Alabama. He had 114 snaps. I like Jalen Moody. He's played a lot of special teams. I think he's a guy who can contribute. You also have Shane Lee. Shane Lee played over 600 snaps as a freshman, only played 35 snaps in 2020. And then you have Ali Kahu. Ali Kahu surprisingly only played eight snaps. And, I, you know, Ali Kahu has been at Alabama for quite some time. He's He's been fantastic on special teams, but he just hasn't got onto the field uh, to compete. You got to think at some point, you know, that's going to change. Is that going to be this year in 2021? Let's talk about the outside linebackers, guys who are returning with experience. And you have plenty of experience returning into 2021. William Anderson, freshman of the year, 646 snaps. He was lights out, right? They called him the Terminator. Seven sacks on the season, 52 tackles, coming back. I mean, that's tremendous for Alabama's pass rush. Because I think when you look to Alabama's defensive line, we, we've talked about the experience that they have, but which guys really can get after the quarterback, like Christian Barmore did, right? Is it going to be Justin Abogbe, Phil Mathis, LeBron Ray, Tim Smith? I, I don't know. Maybe it's going to be someone else. But, um, you know, that somebody else is going to have to step up to provide that pass rush from the defensive line front. But from the outside edge, I mean, William Anderson is your guy. 
And then the way that Chris Allen played, and it, you know, with him returning uh, into the season, he had almost 600 snaps. And I thought that Chris Allen finally started to play like the Chris Allen we had always been anticipating towards the later part of the season. So with those two guys coming back and working with South and Siri, um, man, I'm really elated to see that outside linebacker group take place. And there's going to be some guys who come in. Um, you know, Drew Sanders is another guy that I think people are excited to see perform. He played a ton in special teams, didn't play too much um, for the defense, only 52 snaps, so a small sample size. And, um, you know, we'll, we'll see how he continues to progress into 2021. And, of course, you know, there, there's several other guys, but Alabama didn't go to their outside linebacker depth too much in 2020. So we're just talking about guys who played, um, you know, a, a, I guess a significant time and did see the field in uh, this last season. Let's talk about the corners. Alabama loses Patrick Sartan. He's declaring early for the NFL draft. So you look to who's returning. You got Josh Joe played in 918 snaps. So I think that was the most in, on, on the entire defense. Uh, he had a great grade out on pro football focus, 77.1, which is pretty amazing considering you played in almost a thousand snaps last season, 55 tackles. He's not, he didn't come up with uh, I don't think he came up with the interception last season, but um, look, he, he was not as good as Patrick Sartan, but that doesn't mean that he's not going to be that, um, that leader on the corners going into 2021. He has to be, right? This is his team now. He's a senior. He's got a ton of experience. Um, you know, when he first got here, he was picked on. I think he lost his spot at the corner position, but he's made a great progression. So Josh Joe bleeding the way at the corner position. You also have Malachi Moore. You know, I know he's not a corner. He's a star position player, but I, I put him in this category. 707 snaps. That's amazing, right, as a true freshman. Uh, William Anderson, as, who is also a freshman, had 646 snaps. So when people say freshmen don't play at Alabama, they they don't they don't understand. <laughs> guys are starting at Alabama as freshmen. He's coming back, and I mean his pro football focus grade is 79.6 in 700 snaps, big time. And the thing about Malachi Moore is he has that playmaker vibe, right? He just interceptions, fumble returns, whatever, big hits. So Malachi Moore coming back. I know he was uh, banged up towards the end of the season. That's how it goes when you play that many snaps, right? Um, Brian Branch is another guy that comes back. And I'm curious to see if Brian Branch stays at that star position or if they try to move him around. Alabama does have uh, their returning safeties, who we're going to talk about in just a second. But as you can see, you know, uh, Brian Branch, maybe he'll be that second-tier star. Um, I don't think he'll move to the corner position. I guess we'll just have to wait and see. Jalen Omar Davis uh, played in just 33 snaps, but I think when you look at the corner position, he could make a run for that starting spot. He's going to have to beat out Ronald Williams, the junior college transfer in 2019, and uh, Marcus Banks will also be there. And I, I know we're not talking about incoming guys, but Kyrie Jackson, I feel, is somebody who could really step up for Alabama coming in. I think the corner position, there's going to be a posi position battle for that um Second corner spot after Josh Job. So, and there's plenty of guys to choose from. Not a lot of experience, but uh, the talent is there. Let's talk about um, the safety position. Oh, but before we do, remember uh, JaQuincy McKinstry is also coming in as a corner, so he'll he'll be able to compete for that spot as well. Moving to the safety position, you got Jordan Battle, 820 snaps. A pro football focus grade of 80.9. That's pretty ridiculous considering the, the amount of snaps. Because when you play a larger, uh, when you play enough snaps, and I'm talking like over 500, then you can really appreciate a high pro football focus grade. Because, I mean, that shows you again and again the player's in the right spot. He's making tackles, making the correct reads, etc. 66 tackles as just a sophomore. You got to think it's him and DeMarco Helms. DeMarco Helms, 67.2. Um, I'm, I'm sorry, 600 snaps last season and um, had nearly a 70 pro football focus grade, 62 tackles. But I think what I like about most about DeMarco Helms is the fact that he can lay the boom, right? He's a player who can come up and hit you, make that bone jarring hit. You need a safety like that. I like the combination of him and Jordan battle. You also have Daniel Wright. Now we haven't heard if Daniel Wright's coming back. I would assume he is. Um, he played in over 600 snaps. He was a redshirt junior this past season, but his pro football focus grade was only 52.9. He had 60 tackles, and he came up with a couple of interceptions this past season. So you do have experience within that secondary, at the safety position especially, right? You're going to have to figure out who's going to be your uh, additional corner. 
but you got your star position player. You got um, Josh Job at the corner position. So overall, as you can see, I mean, there's so many guys uh, that played a significant time. I mean, uh, from the defensive linemen, I mean, Justin Abogbe played the most, over 400 snaps. Uh, Christian Harris played over uh, nearly 800 snaps. He's returning inside linebacker. William Anderson played over 600 snaps. Chris Allen played over 500 snaps. Josh Job played nearly 1,000 snaps. Uh, Malachi Moore, 700 snaps. Jordan Battle, 800 snaps. DeMarco Helm, 600 snaps. So my, my point is the experience returns along with the defensive coaches that are returning as well. I, I think that's a great nucleus going into the season. Um, there's, there's pieces that are going to have to be rebuilt on the offensive side. We'll talk about that again and again as we continue to move forward to spring football. But I um, wanted to kind of give the – Alabama basketball team, some love, and then also talk about this uh, defense that people are going to know about as we continue to move forward. Hey, this is the Bama Factor Daily right here on BamaInsider.com. Thank you for watching, listening. We appreciate you more than you know. Hit the thumbs up, like, and subscribe, and we'll catch you next time right here on BamaInsider.com.